These are the roads I love. Quiet back roads. Irregular surface. Shady trees. And sharp curves. This is only a kilometre or two outside Agor. That's a completely different world. That's the beauty of these all-round bikes. And I guess that's the attraction of the gravel bike. Because the roads here in the Philippines, I've, I keep trying to be polite when I describe them. But they can be absolute trash. This is why you see so many Filipinos riding um, hardtail mountain bikes with rigid fork conversions. Because they, you know you can just put w wide wheels on them and wide gears and you're really good to go. I described the roads as trash, but that wasn't an insult. Because one's man one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I have so much fun on these sketchy roads. Sometimes it's almost disappointing when they when they repair them. Because that's the beauty of the gravel bike. Even when there's no gravel, just having that extra tire clearance and a stronger built frame, it can really cope. So you've got the best of both worlds, I reckon. That's not to say you can't do that on a road bike. That was the whole point of those Rafa Continental guys. Road bikes will take you anywhere. Uh, as long as you remember you are on a road bike and don't try and do anything too stupid. Because if you were to ask me, hey I'm coming to the Philippines, what, what bike can I bring? I would 100% say bring a gravel bike. The minimum you should bring is endurance road bike. But anything with the, uh, the wider tyres on it and the uh, wider gears is going to serve you pretty well. So I've had to swap out the cassette um, for some reason. I managed to bend that. I don't know if you can see that. But that is not straight. I was wondering why my shifting was a bit funky down in the 12 tooth. And I think that's going to be the problem. So, yeah, you need these extenders if you're going to run old mechs on big cassettes. Um, but this, yeah, this is not ideal. So, at the moment, I'm back to an 11.30 on a 38. Uh, so, I may have to play around some more. Anyway, after all that talk about bikes that are perfect for the Philippines, I'm going to completely ignore my own advice. And uh, I'm going to show you what I'm actually going to be riding sooner rather than later, hopefully. So all that talk about fat tyres. Um, yeah, I'm going on back on skinny tyres. Uh, the 95 Conago Super. And these were designed for 23 millimeters. You can put a 25 in there, but you can't get the wheel in unless you deflate the tyre. That's how tight the clearances are on these 90s bikes. I have destroyed a couple of old group sets before, so I'm not quite sure I want to go down that path again. Uh, so maybe this will end up with something more modern. Um, we'll see. Uh, can you believe this tiny little thing came all the way from China to Manila, up to Baguio, to my door for 149 pesos. That's about two dollars. Not only did it make it all the way from China for two dollars, it didn't get lost. That's astonishing. Anyway, this is the little setting tool I need for the rig nuts, so that's the final part for my bike. All right, job done. Um, yeah, last piece of the puzzle, so now I've got water. Anyway, to answer the question, is there a perfect bike for the Philippines? 
Uh, the answer is no. The answer is you ride the bike that you love riding. And if you love the bike, you'll ride it more. So it's a stupid question, isn't it? Like there's no such thing as the perfect bike. Just ride the one you love. Uh, which sounds like marriage advice, actually, which is a bit odd. Anyway, I should probably edit that. Yeah, I'm going to leave that video there. Um, so we've actually got flood warnings and the signals are going up. So apparently we're in for a week of uh, torrential downpour. So maybe the best bike for the Philippines is one that floats. Uh, anyway, if you're in Luzon, yeah, stay safe. And uh, cheers, thanks for watching, and um, I'll catch you in the next one.